Hey Calvary, my name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day and this great morning here that we are together. You know, when you look at electronics, there's a little sticker on the back by the battery compartment that says, do not mix old and new batteries. And ever since I was a kid, I kind of rebelled against that. Because let's be honest, if your batteries and your remote are dead, there's a good chance that it's going to be hard to find some unless you're the overprepared, got the battery stock, you know, in the refrigerator or somewhere. And so I was always scrounging from other remotes and things like that, and it always worked. So I went, what's the big deal? Until recently, I learned that there's actually a very valid reason. Maybe not for your remote, but for other devices, there's a really important reason not to mix the two. And without getting too in the weeds of details, basically as a battery dies, the, the resistance for power to travel through that dead battery increases and resistance causes heat. So if you toss a brand new battery next to an old battery and a high drain device, what can happen is the power that that new battery is pushing through the old can build up so much heat that the old battery can either leak, rupture, or even cause that device to catch on fire. So it turns out that warning sticker actually has a pretty good reason behind it. And the reason I bring this up is because mixing old and new almost never works out well. You know, you think about the beginning of the year when people have their New Year's resolutions, you know, whether it be getting in shape and losing weight or getting their finances in order, you know, it's always, hey, let's go do this. But what inevitably happens is, you know, by mid-January or February, what happens is they're mixing old and new. They're mixing a little bit of exercise with their old eating habits, or they're mixing a little bit of saving in the bank with their old spending habits and credit card habits. The mixing of old and new almost never works, and, and Jesus touches on this. Because the reality is that anywhere in our life we see this, you know, you don't go to the fridge and see curdled milk in there and go, oh, I'll just mix it with a new gallon and everything will be okay. And, and Jesus touches on this. In Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 18, um, Jesus is having a conversation and he touches on mixing old and new in a way that I think really impacts our spiritual life, much in the same way in risk of, of mixing old and new batteries could cause an explosion, cause issues. Mixing old and new in our spiritual life can do much of that same thing. Listen to what Jesus says. Mark chapter 2, starting verse 18 says, Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to him, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and they will fast in that day. Verse 21, he says, No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth to an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is destroyed, and so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh wineskins. Now, he's using some examples there. If you're not patching clothes regularly or making wine in your basement, you may not 100% catch what he's, he's talking about, but he's, he's addressing the, dis, the, the disciples' spiritual habits and how they were getting criticized by the religious leaders because the religious leaders were wanting Jesus and his disciples to mix their old religious habits with Jesus' new religious habits traits and tendencies and promises. They're wanting to mix the old way of following God with what Jesus was saying about the new way. And Jesus is saying, you can't do that. That doesn't work. He, he elsewhere says that he's coming to create something completely new, not to create, you know, a, a modification of the old, but to end the old and to begin something new. And here's what this means for us. When we commit to following Jesus, scripture says that we're made new. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away and the new has come. I love that verse. We put it on our baptism shirts and, and you know, our baptism shirts say new creation on it to signify what happens when we commit our life to following Jesus. But it says we are a new creation. We're not an improved version of our old self. We're a new creation, it says. When we commit to following Jesus, we need to be willing to let all that old stuff pass away and to let Jesus come and create new in our life. In other words, Jesus doesn't want to be your co-pilot. He wants to be the captain so he can throw some stuff overboard that doesn't need to be on the ship anymore. 
And, and so for you, as you're walking through life, as you're journeying at becoming closer to God and, and growing closer to following Jesus each day, understand there's some things in your life that, that need to go away. There's some things that you've drugged from your past and you're trying to make it compatible with your new life of following Jesus and that isn't going to work. Maybe it's some personality traits and tendencies. Maybe it's some old sin habits and addictions that you're trying to make compatible. Maybe it's how you treat people. Maybe it's how you spend your money. I don't know what it is, but I wanna challenge you today to allow Jesus to come into your life and to do an inventory and to throw some things overboard that don't need to be in your life anymore. Because it, when we try to mix old and new, volatility happens, there can be issues, there can be explosions, there can be problems. So don't try to mix your old pre-Jesus life with what God wants to do in your life now as you follow Jesus. Allow him to come, do an inventory, and remove some things. It might be hard, it might be painful, but it's gonna be way healthier in the long run if you allow Jesus to be the captain and say, hey, this is what we're going to do, this is the direction we're gonna go, and here's what we're gonna remove. Hope this is a help and encouragement to you. Hope that, that you take the challenge to trust Jesus more fully today and allow him to, to guide and, and lead your life. We'll see you next time.